Hello, and welcome to another conversation with Professor Choi. Uh, we're about halfway through April, and I was trying to figure out how to put a positive spin on a lot of the things that are happening right now. And what I came up with is I want you to think about those of you who know for a fact two, three years from now, everything's going to be okay. And um, I want you to think pretty far from now. So forget next week, forget next month, uh, forget whether they reopen the beach or not, which by the way I'm looking forward to. Um, forget all of that, right? What we want is we want to be setting ourselves up for something later down the road, something to come. All right? So I need you to understand that this is not the first time we have a downturn in economic activity. It's not even close to the first time that something bad as this has happened. I mean, we have World War II. We have uh, the Great Depression of 1929. We have the 80s, which was pretty bad. We have the, the flu, 1918. Okay? And a constant after every single one of those is that after the storm, calm, the calm again. But you need to really think about how far into the future this is going to happen. So today I'm looking at the news and I see the price of oil selling for $11 a barrel. And this got to be terrible for anybody selling oil, anybody in Texas, anybody in Alaska. These contracts are terrible. There's no way anybody makes money at $11, at a, um, at $11 a barrel. By the way, a barrel has about 40 something gallons on it. So, so you understand. Okay? Oil is extremely cheap today. So, it's a bit too early right now to be thinking about how good everything's going to be tomorrow. But it is not too early to start thinking about how you're going to benefit from this. So if you're some of those people that have been listening to some of the things that I've been saying for the past couple of years, like save money. And I've been talking about this, by the way, in my classes and to my friends and to a lot of other people for a while now, about two to three years. And again, we're in 2020, so I've been saying it since like 2017, 2018, you need to start saving money, this is the peak. Then now you might be in a pretty good position to start grabbing some of those cheap assets that are gonna be coming in. Now I need you to kind of think about when these are gonna happen, and then you need to figure out what you might be able to pick up as this is happening. So, it's a bit too early to do it right now. And again, we're in April 2020. Right now, it's a bit too early. This is not over. This is not over by a long shot. We're still going to be here for a while. So, um, I got all my windows open because I want the air to go around. So, anyway. So, I need you to be looking for opportunities. Alright, if you have a lot of money, okay and you still have you're lucky enough to still have a steady job then you need to start looking into some good real estate and again you don't need to buy right now as a matter of fact you need to wait because real estate takes a while for it to really really go down I want you to think about people's priorities alright so you're gonna try to pay that mortgage and you're gonna try to pay that rent and a lot of people are gonna try to keep what they have but there's gonna be a point where they're not going to be able to. And at that point, things are going to come into the market and they're going to be really cheap. Even new properties. Because companies that build houses have to at some point move them. They can't just hold them forever. Holding a property without selling it costs money. So I need you to start thinking, maybe six months, maybe a year, maybe even a year and a half from now, we may have some serious cheap real estate out there and you need to jump on it. All right? You got time though. You could be saving money right now. Again, if you have a steady job and you think you're going to be okay about two, three years from now, then this might be the next time since the year 2008, 2009, and 2010 to start thinking about real estate again. And in a lot of markets, the market has gone up quite a lot. That means that there's a lot of room to go down. All right? But anyway, you're not pulling the trigger on any of this stuff right now. I, I'm making this video because I want you to start thinking about it. Which asset do you want to pick up really nice and cheap now? 
stocks. I don't think the market is done going down. I think uh, as, if you look at history, goes up and down, we're going to be retesting some of the lows that we had already in the panic time. Maybe not as quickly, but we're going to be retesting some of that. Because revenues are not going to be maintained if the economy opens at half full or half fast. Okay? So there's going to be some cheap stuff out there. And if you don't mind waiting, you can pick up some. Boy, I wish I had a big boat with a huge tank on it. Because what I will be doing is I will be buying some of that oil at $11 a barrel. And I will be putting it on that tank. Alright? But I don't. I don't have any boats. Maybe I'll think about that next time I invest. Alright. <coughs> are you on the market for a new car? These are going really cheap already. And this is because the auto industry right now is in full-blown panic mode. A lot of them may not survive this one. So, if you're interested in getting a new car, they're offering 0% APR for 72 to 84 months. That's going to lower that payment really nice and low. Now, it may have all the problems. Maybe you don't want to pick it up because you're going to be upside down for longer. But like I said, if you have a steady job and you think you're going to be okay, then this might be the time to start thinking about picking that up. Now, are you interested in getting rid of an old car? Here's the thing. A lot of these places, maybe not today, as I've been saying, maybe not today, maybe not next month, but at some point, some dealerships are going to be really nice and desperate. So what you need to be doing if you want to get rid of an old car is you need to show up and say, well, I want 0% for that. This is how much I'm going to pay for that. And by the way, I want this much money for my car. And believe me, a lot of the times they're going to be willing to say yes to that because they're desperate to sell. All right. Cheap assets. Boy, I remember uh, in the last recession in 2008-2009, when here in Palm Beach, we started hearing about a lot of people turning in their Lamborghinis into the pawn shop. All right? There's going to be a time in the near future, okay, that some people are going to start unloading some of the assets that they have. A lot of people like to store things in gold, they like to store things in valuables, they like to store things in, in uh, I don't know, expensive cars, all right? And they may have them parked around. If you have somehow know any of these people that might be going through a tough time, you could be the one buying that asset from them, picking it up, okay? Even used cars, if you happen to be into that. Maybe you're a mechanic. And maybe you see a lot of people struggling. You're interested in picking some of those assets up. Again, this is the time. Now, as I said, we're in April 2020 right now. It's a bit too early for you to be picking some of this stuff. It's going to get better. But I need you to understand, after the storm comes the calm again. So, my message to you, start looking and start thinking about what are those assets that you think you might be able to pick up for cheap in the future. Keep saving that money, as I've been mentioning for a while, until the time where that asset is really nice and cheap and available to you. All right? It's been another lesson by Professor Choi. I hope you're listening. Have a good one.